My typical process for planning a film shoot involves converting a script into a storyboard. These simple drawings help me imagine how the shots will look, and they're supposed to help me imagine how the shots will be cut together too. But I'm not a big fan of storyboarding, to be honest. Sure, it's easy enough to draw out a static dialogue scene, but as soon as we have a bit of camera and character movement, it gets difficult to keep track of all the angles, and even more so, the timings. Now, maybe I'm just bad at drawing, or bad at imagining my scenes, but either way, I want to try something that's not so reliant on my imagination. So I'm trying pre-visualization. Today I'm going to make an animated mock-up of a scene so I can see how the shots will flow together after editing, rather than trying to imagine all of the timings while just looking at some drawings. Hopefully this will help me catch any major problems with my shots that I would usually only discover on set, or worse, during editing when it's too late to change things. So I reckon the most precise way to pre is with a virtual location, which I'll be making in Blender, which is some free 3D software. But modeling and texturing, even just a simple room like this, takes quite a long time. So today I want to show you a faster, simpler way to pre without spending any money. So before shooting, most filmmakers will visit a location to have a look around and take some photos. But since I downloaded the free Displayland app, I've also started 3D scanning locations with my phone. Now Displayland have sponsored this video, but as usual they haven't seen this video before it was published and they haven't told me what to say. So let's imagine that we've got permission to film in someone's house, but because of budget and scheduling restrictions, we can't spend lots of time going back and forth to location, bringing cameras and lighting to do all kinds of different tests. Instead, if I take out my phone and start scanning the room, I'll be able to easily make a virtual location. To get the best scan, the key is to walk slowly around the room, covering every angle so the app has as much data to work with as possible. It's worth noting that windows and mirrors can confuse the app, but we'll be able to quickly fix those in Blender anyway. Once I've got plenty of dots around the room, I'll upload the file and let Displayland begin the processing. In the meantime, I'll take a couple of photos, and finally I'm going to take two measurements. So here I measured between the counter and the wall, and the height of the washing machine. And you'll see why once we get to the computer. Now it's the same process with the other rooms. Scan, upload, take photos, and measurements. So a couple of hours later, all of the scans will have processed, so I can export the first one and bring it into Blender. I like to start by using the default cube as a reference, so I can rotate my scene until it lines up with the X and Y axes. Now I'll take that cube and scale it to the distance between the two points that we measured earlier, in this case 1.6 meters. I can scale my 3D scan so that the reference cube fills the space I measured, and I can even check it against my second measurement to make sure that everything lines up. So now I can go into a side view and essentially crop my virtual location, deleting anything that's outside of the windows or reflected in mirrors. Now this model is pretty detailed, so I'm going to save on some processing power by adding the decimate modifier to simplify the shapes. And if I switch to smooth shading, it'll soften some of those edges. Now this isn't perfect, but it should be plenty good enough for our previs. I'll roughly cut out any windows so that we can have light passing through, and you can see that the app does struggle to scan blank walls accurately. But fortunately, flat blank walls are very easy to make by hand. So I'll add the walls and the ceilings before finally adjusting the environment lighting so we can see what a typical cloudy day would look like. Now I'll repeat this process with the other rooms and connect them together into one big project. For some extra details, I can even add simple reflection planes to make virtual mirrors, and simple boxy shapes to make doors and furniture that I can animate later. Once I'm happy with the location model, I'm going to position the virtual camera to set up our first shot. Now because our scene is to scale, we can accurately simulate different camera lenses, zooming in and out, panning, tilting, and even walking around our location. I'll quickly position some free character models I downloaded into my scene, so I can recreate my paper storyboard. Now I've already spotted a few issues. In this shot, we're supposed to see both characters in one frame. But after recreating the drawing, you can see there's actually a screen door in front of where the camera's supposed to go, so we wouldn't be able to shoot from this position. I'll move the camera closer, raise it up, and zoom out so we can see our actor's face. I can still only see the other character's knees, and there's no space to move the camera to the left, so our only option is to reposition our second character. Now, I'm really glad that I had this realization now, so I can make sure that we lay out the set with this shot in mind, rather than if I was halfway through the shoot when I finally realized that this doorway doesn't line up. Plus, I've made a note that I'd need a 28 mm lens to pull off this shot, so now I'll make sure I'll bring that lens to the shoot. And I've just seen another problem with my storyboard. 
In this shot, we need to see the character trying to open this red door and the other character coming down the stairs. Putting the camera on a tripod in the doorway would make sense, but it turns out this banister would block our view of the red door. For the shot to work as I'd imagined it, we'd need to move the camera to the left and there's definitely no space for a big tripod there. So we'd either need to bring a mini tripod that we can put on top of this cabinet or we'll need to leave some time in the schedule to move the cabinet out of the way and put the camera on a compact monopod. So that's one bit of problem solving that I won't have to do on set. So once I've tested out most of my shots and I'm happy with the overall layout, I can use simple keyframe animation to move the characters and camera around the virtual space. I resist the temptation to spend lots of time animating since this is just a pre -vis, and I'd like the actors to have some input into how the characters move. Now in an ideal world, I would rehearse this scene with my actors and then incorporate their movements into the previous. But for today, let's just keep the movement really basic, knowing that the actors will bring their own ideas later. Now, the cool thing about previs is we can make it as detailed as we need to. I could make as many of the lighting, camera, and even set dressing decisions before the shoot. But since film is a collaborative medium, it's probably best to involve our crew, whether it's talking to an art director about the set dressing or sitting with a cinematographer while simulating lighting and camera tests. So once we've set everything up, we can render the shots or make basic screen recordings if we're not too worried about the lighting. And now we can edit these files the same way we'd edit real footage. We could even record a rough voiceover for the actor's dialogue and add some reference sound effects to get a better idea of the final product. But this time, like always, after watching the rough cut, I've realized that there were some problems with my footage. Often I'll have overlooked how long it takes for a character to do something simple like walking through a door and closing it behind them. So being able to see it in real time and feel how long each of those moments last is really helpful. So now I can go back to my virtual set and add any extra camera angles that I need or adjust things until that rough cut is working nicely. By the time it's done, we'll have not only caught some mistakes early, but we've actually created a very useful pre-production tool. For example, I definitely show this to a sound recordist so they can think about where to put the microphones and which kind of microphones to use before they've even arrived on set. So even with this faster method, creating a previous version of a scene or film does take time, but I reckon I could shoot a scene faster and do a better job after making a previous first. Like anything, there is a flip side. I guess when you can plan every single movement and timing so precisely, it would be tempting to kind of get locked into the blueprint that we've created, trying to recreate the timings and angles. But on a real set, you can't anticipate everything. And so I think after previous, I'll have to make an extra effort to take on new and better ideas spontaneously. So long as I can stay flexible, I think previs could be very valuable, particularly for complex or high stake productions. Either way, I know I've learned a lot from making my first previs scene, so I definitely recommend that every filmmaker gives it a try, even if it's just to make storyboarding seem like the easy option. So I wanna finish up by saying thanks to Displayland for sponsoring the video, and there's a link in the description if you'd like to download the app and try out your own scans. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next time.